VIP access. VIP access with Aniko on Africa Loud. Welcome back to VIP Access. When I say that this is a home of Africa's biggest personalities, I am not kidding. My guest today is absolutely amazing. He's the energy god. He's the hype man. He's the broadcaster you want to work with. He's the influencer. I mean, he's the, the favorite influencer to your favorite influencer. So I'm saying he's very influential. And it's such an honor to be sitting here with none other than Dotun from Nigeria. Welcome, my brother. You already know it. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. You know, it's like I said, sometimes the interviewer becomes the interviewee. Yeah, That's a right? right. And, yes. and for me, this is really a surreal moment. I think anybody who knows Dotun, especially, you know, those who come from the entertainment industry, um, know what big of a deal you are and you are one of the people who've opened a lot of doors for me in in nigeria you know when you didn't um kind of know me so well you hadn't even met me but you were so kind to me yeah. i remember when i came to lagos i think in 2019 or maybe before that i actually called you someone gave me your number and i just said hello this is aniko from kenya and already you're like whatever you need whatever you want welcome to cool fm you booked my interview you were not there that day but you know i had a whole hour to myself and i just said what a wonderful and humble and open individual because you're such a big deal but you act like you're not but mm -hmm. most importantly you open doors yeah. for you know young people and the creative so i just want to say thank you so much you're welcome thank you and i feel like um i appreciate it sometimes because the, the job and what we do and i'm sure you're in that space now because where you work so hard and then you know you work to to grow people to the next level you're part of their life you are you are impactful, but the listing in a room that doesn't cost money, they just never tell you. And that's thank you. People don't understand that thank you is a big deal. And that's why a lot of creatives and talents who grow, um, like you said, sometimes I feel like I always have to check myself and ask myself and I keep telling myself that you're not big yet. Even when I go out and sometimes I'm, I'm there and people see the way um, things are preserved, the way people talk to me, and the way people acknowledge what I do. But it's just my way of keep, keeping myself in check. Now, the biggest thing is people don't know how far thank you can go. So you telling me thank you, because the truth is I can choose to throw away any chance that I have. I could, you choose to be selfish about it. But I, I'm not, I, I feel like at the end of the day, the only way for me to light my candles is light yours. But people do not say thank you, and it doesn't cost money. Now, and that's a big, big issue for me. That was why when Rema came out and said, you know, accolades to all the institutions, there's a reason why he said that. Everybody, it was an uproar from people who have done the work for years or people who are still in the business and joining because we felt like we were, we were inclusive. We felt very included for that statement he made because why should that even sound so sacred to say thank you? But it's a big deal for a lot of the talents and creatives who never do that. And also, I always tell people, always remember the people that were there the first time that you never had the chance, and they gave you that door and opened that door for you. You cannot do it by yourself. You know, some people will tell you, ah, you know, maybe I paid him money. That's not my case, because the fact is, I've learned to build myself outside the pennies and all the, I don't want to be penny-wise, pound-foolish. So the, the, what I want to do is able to, to light some of this candle. You're there. I mean, if you pass, recently, I did only did a, um, an interview with a guy called Tayo Aino Films, and he talked about it, and it was shocking to a lot of people. But the truth is, I can tell tons of stories of people that was there from the first day I took that chance. And, you know, like I said, the only difference with me and everybody else is that I think it's just the fact that I've been able to work through this phase and hoping God comes through, and he does. And that's why I, I, there's nothing you can tell me about God. Number one is an is an is top notch for me. I feel like I would never have been here except somebody just looks down on me and say, oh, I like this kid. And it's just grace. And that's what kept me on to this day and goodwill. And you have to be humble while you do that. Mm -hmm. So humility is a very big deal. A lot of people don't don't have it. You get small money, you get bigger, then your head gets bigger. Then that's when you know the real, real work starts. But like I said, sometimes when people judge me and think, oh, that guy's an arrogant guy. Some people come on, 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 on social media and say, oh, he did this for me. And then people are shocked. You know, the truth is, like I said, I don't want to get my blessings from anybody. 
But I also feel like sometimes saying thank you goes farther than what you can expect. And that's why I want to give a shout out to you and everybody else. I know what you feel. You just might never talk a lot about it, but you know, it's the same feeling when you, you just want people to grow. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah, you want people to grow. And then you feel like at the end of the day, oh, you've grown. And just mm-hmm. when I need you, just, you know, you know, come through for me. But it's not the case. Sometimes when people blow up and get bigger, they, they become in, in, inaccessible. And now I relate to everything you say because I look back at some artists who have worked with or some people who have been part of their journey. And sometimes I just want sometimes to also hear them say, yo, we did this together and thank you. And so even I crave for that sometimes. Everybody craves for that. And it's just like someone seeing you. So, it's, yeah. it's necessary because oh, that way... Sometimes acknowledgement, compliments uh, give you that, that, that belief that you're doing the right thing, you know? And sometimes you might not really project the money, but you are aware that, oh, what I'm doing makes sense. It may eventually grow. And at the end of the day, if I can light up someone's life and light some of someone's candle, then I mean, that means I'm doing something right. You have to, have to do it for money or do it for goodwill. The, the, the part of goodwill is you might get poor doing that. Yeah, and everybody you're trying to grow are, are making the money, but you're not making anything. Yeah. So you got to pray to God if grace is going to come. And if it doesn't come, you also have to turn whatever you're doing for anybody and be able to turn it and, and, and monetize it. Yeah. And that's, I mean, the truth is we're here, we're there, people are growing. I mean, I was, I was a young kid straight out from the street for Sue Lady, and I just said, you know what, I want to be one of the best people who's doing this thing, but I want to do it while at my own pace. I don't like listening to when people tell you, oh, you need to do this. Or people tell you, you know, maybe you, ah, you should try this. You try that, do this, do this. I'm like, I know I want to try it. I love it. But I like to pace myself. Hmm. You know, that's why longevity, that's it for me. Legacy, it is for me. Uh, staying relevant, that is for me. You know, I'm not the richest guy, but I'm okay. And that's what I want to be. Hmm. That's what I want to be. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> It's so hard to interview the person who's supposed to be interviewing me. <laughs> Damn. What's the next question? So you are somebody who's, you know, done it all in the industry, media industry, entertainment industry, from radio to TV to, you know, emceeing, hosting, um, dancing, and then, you know, being the energy god and just really infecting crowds with your energy and just moving people with your voice and the voice is so is is so powerful you you have a really powerful voice like when you speak i just want it's commanding i just want to hear you. what you're saying mm-hmm. you know so i i believe that you are also born to do this so tell me about transitioning from just a media personality to this individual who's moving masses not just within the media space but outside you know and now you're in kenya even yeah. how did you you know cross over to east africa so uh for me, for everything that I've grown, is out of lack. Now, for example, if you're from the streets of where I come from, uh, shout out to Whiskid, who's also from Suriname, it was a hub where you find a lot of aspirers and till date, but you don't know where is the, the next um, door will open. But it's a, a place that gives you hope that you know you can get out. And now the only hope you might have is when you see through the eyes of other people who, who went through that phase and passed it. I lived in, uh, uh, I, I grew up in a very small, very small house. I had to walk through a swamp to get to my house. The first time I dropped a video where I was, I was from and where, the, where I lived, people were shocked. But the thing is I had very, very intentional parents that just wanted you to be different from, they didn't want you to be different from other kids. You might not have all, all the best in the world, I mean, but they want you to have all your books. They want you to have your snacks at the right time, uh, not things overboard. And then, you know, just a young guy who's trying to be a building engineer waiting for the next contract. And you have a mom who is very into God, deeper life straight up to date. And she just loved God and she was a nurse. And, you know, even when things were not popping, nobody ever knew because she just wanted to wear Christmas clothes, eat the right food, you know, and all that. But it was not, it was a one bedroom, you know, there. But when I get out, when it, when nights close, it never seems like that, mm-hmm. you know. And a very supportive dad. Absolutely. Only this morning we're at an interview, and your dad is, you know, woken up. I don't know what time in West Africa yeah. to see what you know his son is doing in Kenya and shouting you out. So I think it's always something um, that will move you when you always yeah. get the support from the people who matter the most, like your parents. Yeah. So and that's why sometimes, you know, we, our prayer is they go before us, right? 
Uh, he has had his own challenges in health, but he's a very strong person. And he always inspires me because he's a big, he's a big fan of what I do. My, my, my dad will be the first one of the first to send you messages and tell you, good, want them to know much about you and all that. Uh, quite different from how I used to grow up with him because I know sometimes in the toughness, he might be tough on you. You of just course. don't know he doesn't, but it doesn't mean he loves you less, right? Yeah. So, um, and, and that, those are kind of things that have shaped my, 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 my transition. When I say it's lack and I want to move, I want to move ahead. Mm. I don't want to be here. I always told myself that. And then I started a career in, in, in dancing, which was then, it was out of the fact that I was in a school where but there was nothing fun about it. It was a mass communication school, but it was just too serious. And then I was like, everybody gets out of class and what's happening? It was, it was like, I'm, I was going to just the same high school that I left. And I'm like, you know what? Even the high school had more fun. So I said, you know what? I always wanted to be a guy who was a really witty, fun self. Uh, I was always open-minded back in school. And then I just felt, you know what? I used to watch a lot of videos and music by Michael Jackson. Um, that, was, that was one of the first guys that passed that really made me cry, right? Because I felt he went through a lot before he gave it up. But he, it was phenomenal. There's no other person. There's only one Michael Jackson. Mm. And then I used to watch a lot of videos from uh, the guy they called Wade Robson, who he had a popular show at that time on, um, um, I think I remember, but it was very popular on MTV at that time. So, and then I should watch a lot of dance shows. And that was what it was. I said, you know, dancing is cool. I think I could try. But you know what? I thought it was nice because that was out of lack. But then it was only satisfying a bunch of guys who don't care. And at the end of the day, I said, you know what? I wanted to get on mainstream. And then I started to do music videos. And then from there, I got on some popular music videos. And, but that was it. It was nothing. Because at the end of the day, it didn't, it didn't translate to what I wanted. Because at the end of the day, even if you were hanging out with the biggest stars or you were you know, dancing in you know, hottest music videos or dancing at events or gigs behind any artist, the truth is there's still lack. Because at the end of the day, you're not, you're, you're not, you're on the food chain, you're the list guy. So you're going to lack in funds and also you're going to get disrespected while doing a craft. So dance was not respected at that time. And I felt, you know, it lacked something. And I think they, they needed the depth. And I said, you know what, I'm moving from this phase because at that time I had a dad who used to buy me transistor radios, make me read a book every day, make me read news newspapers every week and it made me watch shows on TV. It was, so sometimes when I come in on old shows, on social media, people are like, wow. But my dad <laughs> made me watch all those shows, very educative. And it was a show I never liked, but he made me watch it, Food Basket. It was very serious. It was on a popular national TV, but I didn't like it. But he made me watch it. But what I liked, it was the analysis of a guy who talks about food, and he was very comprehensive about it. And then I said, you know what? And he used to make me listen to a show called uh, 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 Voice of America, Shaka Sally. Always every night before I go to bed, I listen to it. So he didn't know he was shaping me. And then I started to love some guys on radio, like Steve the Sleek Cattery, rest in peace, Topo Brown, rest in peace. Uh, I started to listen to guys like that, who had great voices on radio, very distinct. Their vision was very different from mine, from anything. And then that was when I started to think I could do a radio commentary, where I can talk about music, talk about life, culture, lifestyle, and be able to have a good conversation but then I was a horrible guy who didn't know how to speak properly, you know, at that time. And I said, how do I do this? You know, but then the first thing is, okay, I'm going to school. I'm going to actually major in mass communication. And then my dad said, oh, your uncle's a doctor. I said, I'm the kind of guy, listen, if you put me to, to see a patient, I might forget the seizures in your tummy. So I don't think I have that kind of depth. <laughs> so I don't think you want me to be a doctor, actually. And he was like, you know what? I remember the day he sat just across the room dim lights, and he told me, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to do mass communication. And that's what I majored in school. So I was very deliberate about that. Now, I didn't know where exactly that was going to take me, but it was also out of whack. I got to school. I was there, witty guy, brilliant in school, quite best guy, maybe to my 300 level. I was very young. I was the guy who was talking. I, I just get up, and everybody wants to listen. I cracked the well. I was very um, serious, quite playful. And then I started a dance group called Extreme. And then, you know, that was how we kicked off. I used to bring a rig re recorder to school, a deck in a bag, you know, and played at the center of the class and I just rocked with it. And then I started to have people join the group. One of the guys at my group at that time 
is the guy who choreographed Pete Square to date. Ooh. Flex. Yeah. <laughs> that's Ooh. my guy. When, that's, that's, that's the thing. Oh my God. Because when we talk about pop culture and we talk about just African, you know, achievement, you know, excellence, you are right there. You know, when you say that, because I remember when I interviewed Rude Boy from P Square, I was telling him and asking him like, not even asking him, but I was like acknowledging like these are the first music videos that showed Africans that we could match up to yeah. the international or American videos that were on MTV. And I remember him saying we were just tired of seeing people shooting videos by the cars or whatever. We just wanted to show that yeah. we can do it as well as any other person. And we had to you know, do big budget videos, yeah. do well choreographed. Uh, videos and that's really what defined you know Peak Square as yeah. a brand. It wasn't just the music, but it was the look, the brand, the dancing, the choreography. At some point, they were performing, and I could see MJ moves in some of their yeah. or inspirations in yeah. some of their movements. And now you're letting me know that you know that has been part of your story. Yeah. So and that's why the, the thing is, you also have to give them a lot of credit because they were one of the people that just stuck to, you know what, dance will thrive. Yeah. And then they didn't stop till date and they're still doing it. Yeah. And that's how Flex grew a career in choreography. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I had it then, but he was a better dancer than I am. Mm -hmm. I remember one time we won Best Dancer and we had to share it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, but he went on to push on that, but I wanted more. You know, and You're then hungry he goes, uh, I'm, 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 that, I'm that guy. I'm, my hunger is not burning, but it's, it's, it's necessary. Because that way I feel like a lot of people look up to me and I'm not going to drown and just fizzle out. I want to rest when I have to, but I, it's what I love. I make my job a hobby for me. So it makes me happy. So, I mean, dance was just something I did. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to bring this back. Well, how do I bring this back? Then I got on radio. Now, to get on radio was another tough business for me because then I was in class and another guy called uh, in Zeribe who happened to be, uh, there's a buddy called Apcon who, they were, they're the ones in charge of adverts and, and across the, he was the chairman at that time. Mm. So he told me, he said, listen, I have access to radio stations. You're a very witty guy. I like you. You're very unserious. Sometimes I like the way you speak to people and how you talk. And I see that you have, uh, you're a people's man. And so, you know, it'd be nice. Be, you could do radio. I said, that'd be nice. I said, what? And he mentioned three radio stations. He said, Cool FM. He mentioned Rhythm FM. And he mentioned MITV. Now, MITV, I didn't like it because I'm like, no. I, I, I wanted a futuristic station, which at that time, I felt like it was too, uh, the, the shows were so traditional and, you know, archaic, but great. I mean, because he services some, some type of crowd, but that's not what I wanted to major in. And then at that time, Rhythm was popping, but I felt Cool FM just had the type of vibe that I wanted. Hmm. And I said, you know what? I would like to work at the radio city. I said, Cool FM, instantly. And the guy said, okay, okay, I'll see what I can do. And I chased the guy for almost two months. He's so rest in peace now, he passed. And it was the one time he just saw me. I said, yo, does you always disturbing me? He said, I want to do this thing. He said, you're always disturbing me. You know what? Just call the guy. He called the guy that said, just go, 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 go. And I walked into Cool FM November 1st, 2004, as an intern. And then that's when all the madness started. Because now, hierarchy is very key in the broadcasting space. Now it's a lot different now because now these days you find kids who can just put one or two words together and then you give them a job. No. Then, and that's why you can see the older guys lasted longer because they earned it. The younger ones don't because they don't even see the essence of it. It's just a job to them. But for me, it was a passion and a legacy. So for everything that was thrown at me, I was ready to take it. You know, bought up, first of all, when there was a time I gave my name Deal to the TUN, and a top broadcaster said in the meeting, I said, what kind of a name is Deal to the TUN for a radio name? It's a shitty name, you know? And um, I think I'm going to mention the name in my next book. Because <laughs> I'm going to write a book when I turn 40. Yeah. I'm so I'm like, nah. And then, but he was also pushing me, because he was also a great guy. He was like, uh, you know, there was like a, a devil with... with uh, with his, his sin covering as well, you know? He had his bad days and those bad days, but he was also training me. So I want to give a big shout out to the likes of uh, Daddy Freeze, likes of Olisa, uh, likes of uh, Manny. I brushed up on everything. Mm. My first audition, you don't want to hear it. It was shitty. Like, I listened to myself, like, how the, how the hell did I sound like this? This is, 
I sound stupid. I'm like, <laughs> it didn't even work. And then there was a, there was always a house style. Mm. You have to sound a certain way. You have to have a type of carriage, mm. and everybody fits in a different show. And that was it. I just started working on myself, and then I used to board up. It was a time they came and doing an interview for me one time. I thought, you know, when you've grown, and I looked at the guy. I said, "You where you're putting cameras? That's where I used to sleep." And the guy was shocked. I said, "That used to be my bed, where you put those cameras on, and you want to celebrate me? That used to be where I used to sleep." I was like, really? Yeah. So I used to bother for people, night shows. And then when I started to grow, I used to collate songs. I used to do a chart that was going to 13 states in, in the country. Uh, the biggest stars, think about them. Sometimes I'm down, I hear people say, oh, what did you do for me? <laughs> she cracks me up. <laughs> because, you know, I feel like if I have to do my own podcast, hell will let loose. <laughs> because the truth is, they all live in a bubble. Once they grow, they're big, they're on the bubble. You know, yeah. But then I, I used to, I used to take, uh, I used to reach out to a guy, rest in peace. His name is Tom Rounds. That was a guy that I used to collaborate with radio stations here. And I had a, a chat with him. I tried to talk to him that I couldn't send music from here. You should can put on CDs that go to top radio stations in America. So the first time, the first guy that ever got on that was Ice Prince. And Ice Prince is another great guy who returned the favor by letting me open his show as a hype man in London. The first and guy that ever gave me that song. that's how the shot. energy got, got created. Somehow. And then, but I Prince acknowledged it. This little things. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to sit in a corner for hours. I would audition CDs and songs. So there was a song I used to love at that time because I'm like, when am I going to get my own shot? I'm here working hard in a corner I research music, do all of that, label CDs, music, have to listen to like over, over a thousand CDs in, a, you know, in three days, four days. It's crazy. And then you have to collate the songs and all that and label them, rack them. And then at the end of the day, I just started to, you know, so I, used to, I was burning out. So I, I used to listen to a song from Lighthouse Family, uh, Free. I wish I could. So it's like, I love what I'm doing, but I'm not earning anything. I walk from bus stop to bus stops with no money in my pocket. I'm kind of a nap sack. My dad told me one day, how long do you want to do this? You know, I've walked from crazy places to get to work. No money just to get on the and bus. the Lagos heat? Yeah, crazy. You know, and that's why sometimes people don't know when they speak to me on social media. I have a tough skin now. I've been through it. So, and then I'm not the kind of guy who begs. So I just didn't know how, because we're also a very closely knitted family with whatever we have, we're content. I think those things touch me contentment. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm able to stay humble. No matter what I have, whatever I do, I just try to stay in that box. So it was tough, to be honest. It was really tough. So I used to cry a lot. You know, people don't know I get emotional, right? <laughs> I'm the kind of guy I could watch movies and cry. Yeah. You know, I used to watch a show. But I cry. always, I, I always kind of knew that I don't know that you're kind of like a teddy bear. You know? uh, yeah, inside. <laughs> like soft inside, tough like, outside. I don't let people see that, and I think sometimes even the closest people and loved ones take advantage of it. You know, I come across as tough. I'm, I'm very misjudged. You know, but the thing is that I just like. I think. The, the business and what I've done and life, how people have treated me, have toughened me up. And then at the end of the day, but you you got to know me to get it. Yeah. So. To get the real you. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I, and that's the part I don't really show every time. But the thing is, at the end of the day, and that's what made me so outspoken about my, so many things. People are too scared to tell the truth. I'm not one of those guys. I think people would even be scared of calling you. I was scared of calling you when I was given your number because even the friend who gave me an industry person didn't want to call you and say, I'm with Aniko and this is... She said, just call Zutun. <laughs> say who you are. So it took me a lot, you know. Even when I had to email you, I was like, I hope I don't make any mistake. So, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm so honored, you know, to have you at my podcast and, you Thank know, you. to be able to talk to you, you and... And yeah, you're really down to earth. You're really humble. And I'm still very thankful for all the you're opportunities welcome. you've opened for me. You're welcome. Um, which are endless, you know, from West Africa to Kenya all the yeah. way. Um, but I want to ask, then how did you crack that code? You know, many years of doing what you're passionate at and not actually making the money. What would you say was the breaking point of that just changed the game for you? The breaking point speaking? for me financially 
First, let me start with you, God, you need to dare to be different. Yes, I was a broadcaster like everybody else, but I was different. Maybe in, I, I always want to come. It was a job that was seen as you're just someone behind a microphone, maybe, but not a pretty face. They, it, that was how it was played back at home. They just, oh, they're not always looking good, but they have a great voice. And I'm like, no, I'm different. You know, I might not look good, but I will look good. So the little things I have, I started to say, you know what? I decided to invest in myself, you know, try to look the part. And then I, I think I wanted a crop of broadcasters that said it's more than radio. You know, it's just more than a, a pretty face or a great voice. There's a lot more to me. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to prove when I started, when I got my own shot. Because I said, no, I'm not going to be the guy who's going to be behind the scenes. So the break for me was my interviews were different. My conversations on the radio were different. The way I sounded was different. The way I dressed, I'm even something I could wear what you would not even think I'm gonna wear, but I'm I want to rock it. But like you you're know, you're so different <laughs> even today. Looking at you, the first thing I saw I was like, I want those pants. pants and yeah. then I looked at your kicks. I didn't have time to say those are the sickest kicks. Thank you very much. You know, the personality is definitely Thank different. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And it's not something that is very that resonates with broadcasters. So <laughs> a shout out to likes who people who chain that face. Uh, people like Tools. Yes, Baby, Kemi. Um, yeah, Kemi Smalls, um, Talking Mac and Wild. Of course. Yeah, so they started to look above. Yeah, there's this being, new chick uh, on, on, on Cool. Is it Mercy? Uh, oh, Mercy was there. That was a long time ago. Uh, she's not there anymore. There's somebody, there's a new chick. Uh, What's uh, her that's, name? That's uh, Eve or Tammy. She she has a show. I think she's been on Cool, but she's on, she's on Beat now. Okay. Yeah, but I think Tammy... And, uh, you know, and that that was, uh, Tammy was one person that was like, you know, I'm plus size, but I'm a beautiful plus size woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she started to project that idea and saying that you could be anything, but you cannot really just be behind the scene. Yes. So for me, the breakthrough for me was a radio allowed me to discover myself and a lot of things. And then I realized it's also another lack. I'm going to do this job for how many years? Am I going to make money for it? Broadcasting doesn't make money. It's just a platform that projects is in the next level. But people don't see that. You have to see it as a platform and as a springboard. It's not going to give you the money you want. It's only going to put you in the room and put you where you can make money, but it's not going to give you the money. If you leave off that money or you leave off the salary, you're not going to make nada for yourself. I was very privy to that and I was quick to understand that. And I said, you know, there's lack in something. The hospitality business had great spent money, but there was no life in it. It was just something that people just go for parties and go home without having fun. And I'm like, you know, there can be a party no matter what it is, and there can be an energy in that room. It could be a party about having knowing how to brush your teeth. It could be a party about dental care. It could be a party about, <laughs> oh, oh, you know what, we're talking about law and how or or you know how to read contracts. Or it could be anything, a party mm -hmm. about anything. It that is already serious. So, but then now that's why you see in Nigeria, everything has an after party now, <laughs> you know, because now then it was not that case and it was out of lack. And I said, you know what, bro, I let's, need to start let's something party. different. Let's party. That's it. And that's when I started hype. Let's put some hype into Absolutely. it. And that's Whatever when, it is. And it was there already. Shout out to Special Ed. Special Ed, it was one of the, so hype is in different faces. Mm. Special Ed was one of the guys who used to hype behind, he still hides behind David Doe. And he used to be with a group called Mo Hits at that time. It was mm. like the DJ Khaled who jumps on the tracks, you know, he would do voice drops and it would be Legend and Life. But I used to like, I like, I like this. As a guy they called Larry D2 who was a popular hype man in the UK, but at bars, he used to do it at bars. And then, then what I did is I said, I need to brush up on this. How do I make this a commercial success? I don't want to, I, even if I stand behind any artist, how do I make them put this in the boardroom and bring it to corporate parties and, you know, and weddings and stuff like that? Then it was nothing. If you're going to go jump on the mic, the first thing you think, who's this guy making a lot of noise? Everybody wants to be in a straight jacket and wear <laughs> suits and say, well, I'm trying to... Everybody was an MC. I'm like, you know what? I could double us both. <laughs> and then I started as an MC <laughs> and I got tired of it. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. There's too many people, massive ceremonies, fighting for the same job. No, lack. And then I just started on radio, Party Club Mix. It was a show called Party Club Mix on Cool FM. And then I started to listen to, I watch a lot of bashment, listen to a lot of bashment, watch a lot of Jamaican shows. And it was already popular in the UK then. When you have a guy on a microphone, it's grinding, mm. rock, rocking a microphone and a DJ's playing. Mm. And shout out to likes of Tim Westwood. Of course. And I said, you Pioneers, know what? Yeah. Then, you know, let's put this on the radio. 
And then it was a DJ and myself and we decided to rock it. And at the time it was DJ exclusive. You know, he was from the UK, came, and I'm like, let's do it. And I told him that it's something we could do. And so let's kick it off. And then you decided to have a party where you have a DJ on the radio with a guy hyping on the microphone seamlessly. And then with voiceovers, you know, doing production, knowing how to produce jingles, I already knew what voice control is. Don't disturb the music. Unlike a lot of hype men now these days, they just disturb the music, you know, and make a lot of noise. Sometimes <laughs> let the music play. I know they want to hear your voice, but play with the music, you know. And that's why I said, you know, let's make it sing because radio, you don't want anybody in the car just hearing a guy just screaming on the, on the, on yeah. the microphone. So it was beautiful. And then the first party we ever got booked for a club was Deuces. And then I was like, oh, this is actually different. This can work. And then they booked both of us to do it. And I started to build. One day somebody called me. I said, what are you doing? This is, does this make sense? It's noise. I said, don't worry, wait for it. And then I became a guy who was a hype man that can jump on your tables anytime. I don't care who you are. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? You're not, don't come to my party. I was so intentional. So the thing is, my go-to is I want to smile on everybody's face. Sometimes I want you to be shocked. I want you to be stunned. And then I just said, you know what? Everybody said, this is your energy. This your energy is different. TJ just said, you know what? I'm the energy god. And I watched the movie, a Mortal Kombat movie. I play video games. I always love Raiden. I don't know why I love Raiden. Raiden is, is a god. He was humble, very cool, but he was the most powerful. He can make Liu Kang, anybody, to do what they want. And I said, you know what? I like this guy. I can embody this, bring it to a party, come in like, who is this guy? When I pick up the mic, I'm a different guy. So people would even think, oh, is this guy on drugs? I don't even smoke. I've never smoked before. The only thing is that, I, yeah, I'm an occasional drinker, but the thing is I take a lot of water when I'm doing my stuff and I, when I jump on stage, and that was how I nailed it. Gradually, that was a turning point for me. As a matter of fact, Hype used to make a lot of money for me. And the, my first house that I bought was through Hype. Wow. And then I started to say, you know what? Now I started to do corporate parties. Then the narrative started to change. I, was, I used to say hype is alive. Every of my narrative, I throw in that conversation. Every platform that I have, I speak about hype. Every single thing that I did, I'm like, I speak about radio and hype, hype and radio. I'm like, you know, anybody doing anything larger than life, selling anything larger than life, a pastor is a hype man. A guy who is calling to try to get you on the bus to get to the next place and saying, oh, we're going there, we're going there. Please jump in the bus, we're going to Nairobi. That's a hype, man. He's selling anything larger than life. Yes. Absolutely. At the local market, there's this hype. Yeah. And that's how it just, it was a commercial. So I made it a commercial success. Anybody doing it now beats off anything that I've done. It's the thing that I started to say, you know what? You can be a hype man behind an artist. And shout out to people like Vector the Viper. Vector said, bro, I've seen you work. Come and hide for me at the industry night. And then I'm like, okay, I can be as big as the artist. And then I'm on, on the mic and maybe like, who's this guy? You know? And then afterwards, Olamide called me and said, you know what? I want us to do stuff together. Then Olamide used to call my name. That's when the, the popularity of mentioning your name on songs. You know, then, you know, when they shout you out, like American rappers do, a lot of those one of the first guys used to Vector to did that. And then they were like, oh, like, ah. Uh. So there's a song you probably heard, like, ah, uh, um, um, uh, that Olamide said when mm. he said the high party poji. Don't you cool FM, high party poji. Let me go sick it. Lambati poji. So what he's trying to say is, don't you, yeah, as a hyper guy, man, your, your hype is mad. <laughs> Just the same way I am when it comes to the, my pain game, mm. I'm dope as well. So those things started to resonate. And it, those things gave me some type of street cred because I was always with him. Olamide was a guy who grew from the street. And I know the first time I ever met him in the radio station, he came to the radio station through Tony Payne. And I just loved him. So at some point, you know, a lot of people called me, oh, he, you know, he's, he's, he rocks for YBN all through radio because I loved him. And then, and they gave me that platform. Shout out to him. And, you know, and I started to tour with him. I did a tour with him in five cities in the United States, New York, Dallas, uh, Atlanta, um, um, five cities, five cities in New York, and you know, it was good. London, and that was it. We started to do a couple of shows, gigs, 
and we did his concerts together. And at some point, I realized I'm starting to grow this thing. And then I started to outgrow being behind the scene, or being behind an artist. Mm. And then we had a conversation about it. And then I moved into doing my thing, my own thing. So you know what? And hype it could be anything. And that's how I commercialized it. I've done a lot of parties, gigs. So I'm like, my motto is I'm going to raise the debt. That's my motto. So I don't know, I don't care how dead that party is. <laughs> I don't care how dead it is. And Everybody then, has to wake nah, up. Nah, you got to wake up. <laughs> and that's what it was for me. And then, so, and now I'm here in, in Kenya for a different reason entirely. To, to, to raise all the Kenyans <laughs> from, their, from their sleep. No, so the thing is, <laughs> Kenya is a beautiful place. Thank the you. culture is amazing. And you love the weather. Whether you like it or not, I always tell people sometimes from the flag that you have, look at the beauty of your country from your flag. Kenya, with even the way the design, it can be made into a lot of things. And so, and now you guys have a good weather as well. And then I also see that the oneness in language, you know, it's not you just speaking one language. In Nigeria, there's so much diversity. We have over half. Hundreds of languages. It's like the Tower of Babel. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But you guys speak the same language, not just in the country, yeah. but in across the region. In the region. Yeah. That's very powerful. Very powerful. If we can all speak the same language. And that's how you see when East Africans come for you, <laughs> when they come for you, they really <laughs> come for you. It's always like a Kenya versus yeah. Nigeria. So it's, it's thing always happening. Even Kenya. It's like East Africa versus. So it's like whatever everybody's doing in a country, everybody's just joins. Yeah. Because now you, you're speaking, I can understand your language. You know, even if I, I am in Tanzania or I am in, um, um, you know, uh, Uganda, some Uganda, parts, yeah. yeah. I think Malawi. Yes. Yeah. We can understand ourselves. And I think that's it. So for me, it, I, I felt like in that, then we have content creators that I build good numbers, mm. you know? Maybe not outside of their own space because we in Nigeria, we, we project more. We do not like our comfort zone. And then I realized at the end of the day, you cannot be in entertainment, growing all these things for yourself. Then how do you teach people that are coming behind you? And that's when I joined, I go, went into the business of tech. Tech is, tech is a different people. Jay-Z, Nas, likes of Camilla Nair, um, shout out to the, the guy, his name is 21 Savage. They started to grow and think, you know, tech is, an, it's, it's a future. They might not say much, but people do not even know, don't, don't even know. I think Nas is, has shares or uh, equity in Dropbox or something. Yeah. But people don't even know that. And then I said, you know, why would I build all of these things? It's time to branch into a space that changes my, my dimension and and my direction, how I see things. East Africa have a lot of talented people. I already spoke about Saudi Soul. There is no way in this world that Saudi Soul would have a big song like with Burner or have done great songs with the biggest stars and they're not shooting out concerts in all of Africa. They should be doing tours, stadium tours in Africa. I'm not saying outside, but that, that's what she should be. It takes you just one song. Nigerians do, they go out with just one song. And they, they go to the whole world with Absolutely. one song. <laughs> I can give it Let alone Africa. I can give you examples. I mean, Spyro did a song, Who's Your Guy? He did a tour in London. I'm not sure if South have done a tour in London before. They have. They have. They have. Great they have. Yeah. Great, they've, I, they haven't toured London, but they've had London among their, uh, as a stop during their European tour. Okay. Yeah. But I see that for me. They're way bigger than they think. Way bigger. Most definitely. Yeah, because of the type of songs they've done and all that. And, and I see that that's why you don't see your comfort zone. You don't. And it's just, and I see that at the end of the day, why do I have to wait for them to come? Why can't I come here and meet them? And that's why I'm here to, to talk to content creators mm. and you know people who are pundits and, and uh, people who create content in music as mm. well and all that, anybody. So it's also a platform where you can teach these things. Mm. So you can grow community. You cannot start 
or go anything by yourself, you have a community of people that actually resonate with your ideas, your values, your norms. They want to look, look at Travis Scott. It's not the music, it's him. So you have people who listen to the music and people just, you know what, it's not even about the music. It's just a persona. Mm. He, every, his, his fans behave like him. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy as him. So the thing is, that's why music is more than music now. It's, it's a culture and it's value exchange. I love it. I love it. Thank you. I love it. I mean, I always say that, you know, when I started my career in the industry, I don't know, I think 13 years ago, internet wasn't even such a big thing. You know, those days, traditional media was everything. You needed your video to be yeah. on a specific TV show, specific channel, and you you had made it. Yeah. So we've now transitioned from when traditional media was king and queen to digital media to now podcasting to now school being a, an alternative school. Yeah. You might not go to the university, but you get this kind of you know opportunity to study whatever you want to study yeah. from the best content yeah. creators um, and your favorite personalities. So I think what you are doing right now is commendable and I applaud you for this era in your career mm. where you have come from an individual making you know, the best for himself to yeah. opening yourself to want to make the entire industry better and also seeing East Africa as a potential. And I do wish you well in everything you Thank do. Thank you very and much. You're always welcome. Thank you very here. much. You know, anything you want, your, your farm. Thank you very much. I mean, that's it. Uh, you have to grow to build a family because that's the only one. They're the ones that can hold you down. Yeah. yeah the and, and, and thank you for, you know, when I made that call, I said, you know what, you want to go to Kenya? I have a plug. You know, sometimes when we build relationships, you're not sure where the person will fit in and how to. And when that came, I'm like, this is it. It just makes sense. And, you know, you did a great job uh, plugging in us and, and, and putting us in the right space. I mean, shout out to what you've done over time. You made it so easy for me. I don't like, I like to work, but I like to work smart. <laughs> <laughs> I stop working hard. <laughs> I rather work smart now because you know uh, working hard is, you know, sometimes <laughs> it tells on your health and tells on everything. But like, like I mean, you you should be in the media now. But like, I can imagine that I've seen your podcast, and then, I mean, you, you've grown numbers, but now you're doing it seamlessly on a different platform, and now you're owning it, which you can pass any information you want without holding back. Yeah, and that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you so much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that's the amazing Dotun all the way from Lagos, Nigeria. Also follow Dotun. He's uh, on all the social media channels yeah. and, you know, he might just be waking you up from the sleep at the <laughs> next event. <laughs> we'll be back next week with yet another energy um, filled individual. Thank you for listening and watching VIP Access. VIP Access Season 4 is proudly supported by the Australian High Commission.